seem a little flustered. Um, it's because probably about an hour ago, my also extremely nerdy computer-based streaming system completely shat itself. And uh, all the video that was coming into it looked uh, like it was, I don't know, running through an old Amiga 64 and it simply just didn't cut the mustard. So as any good nerd does, I uh, had to MacGyver it, race back into a deep dark corner of the nerd cave, pull out an old video switcher, drag it in, patch all the cameras in so that we could still get the, you know, the multi-camera experience to which some of you have become accustomed, but I certainly wouldn't want to let anybody down on that front. Um, so as we said, we are live on uh, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. So if you want to fire any questions, do that and I'll do my best to spot them. Normally, as I said, with my extremely nerdy streaming system, I have this cool way of seeing comments and having them actually pop up on screen so everybody else can see them. We're not going to be able to do that today. I'll probably weep in the corner in the fetal position, rocking backwards and forwards, sucking my thumb later on. But, you know, that's just something that I'll have to deal with. Um, so I've tried to do the best to recreate that multi-camera experience uh, as best I can. Um, usually with my other system, I can grab a phone and wirelessly give you little close-ups on things. Uh, in the small amount of time that I had, I sort of MacGyvered together a GoPro. So we're going to try to use that wirelessly so I can show you some close-ups on this rig we've got here. What we've got here is the June, I think that's how they're supposed to say it, the June Crane 3S, um, which is a kind of an exciting product for the price point. As I said in the little preview thumbnail of this video, we're talking about a roughly $100,000 camera on a $2,000 gimbal. For those of you who aren't familiar with gimbals, it's a way of smoothly flying through the world with a camera, but most of the people watching here, I'm sure, would know exactly what we're talking about. Um, so what this gives you is the ability to fly cameras which would normally require something more in the range of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of gimbal hardware to get around with. The reason why I'm personally quite excited about this, I've got a huge music video coming up in, it's actually, we're actually going to start shooting next week, uh, and that's going to involve a whole lot of do-it-yourself car rigging, and gimbals are a perfect solution for a car. If you can figure out a way to isolate the vibrations of the road using some kind of a kill shock device or an isolator, if you can throw a gimbal on that, you can have a hothead effectively, a camera that can pan and tilt and move around and it absorbs a lot of the um, unwanted movements and you can get extremely high-end shots uh, that used to be out of the reach of most kind of do-it-yourself filmmakers. So if this can pull off what I think it's gonna pull off, I'm super excited. In another little bit of cool news, it's official. FedEx tracking confirmed yesterday, my red Komodo Stormtrooper lands tomorrow, which is super exciting. So if anyone's not familiar with that, it's basically the power of this ridiculous $100,000 red camera, most of the power of it, in a small little four inch cube. So it records red code raw, it's got an SDI out, it's got a lot of other cool features like a global shutter, and you can be sure I'll be testing that to, to the nth degree and uh, making a lot of wanky videos about it. And being so small, it really opens up a world of possibilities with the kind of devices that you can use it with. Um, so why don't I stop blathering on about all that and get you right into what the Crane 3S can do. So the package I've got here is what they call the Pro package. Uh, so you get a few, you get an extra battery pack, which I'll tell, which is really important that I'll tell you about in a second. You get some focus motors um, and it, just to give you a bit of a comparison, this is their previous generation Crane 3 Lab. So it's not, the new Crane 3S isn't significantly bigger. Um, it's a little thicker around the midsection, I suppose. Um, it's certainly got a lot more battery power, which we'll go into in a second, um, but it's not massively expanded on the, the old 3 Lab. Um, if you haven't seen these before, the point of difference on these gimbals as opposed, as opposed to others, I guess, is this handle at the back is really the key difference. So it means that you can quite easily go down into low mode and get down for low angle shots and then be able to come up quite easily. Um, so it's kind of a, a bit of a different take on how to use a gimbal. Um, it also means that the camera that you're shooting with, especially if you're using DSLRs and all you've got to work with is the screen on the back, that screen's not obstructed by all of the gimbal hardware like it is on, say, some of the, Ron the early, earlier Ronin S or uh, the Ronin M. Oh, no. The, whichever one the lollipop stick was, I think that was the Ronin S. You used to have this thing right in the middle of the screen so you couldn't really see what you're doing. So that's another little key feature of it. Um, so I'll put that old one away. And let's see if I can get this bad boy going so I can take you around the features of it. I'll just flick on a little light here to get a bit more detail on that. And what have we got? So I'm just going to move this guy into the center. So I've already got the red mounted and balanced on it roughly just so that we're not wasting too much time 
looking like a simpleton trying to violate a doorknob. So if I switch across now, there it is, hello. And I've even got a little light here that can give us a bit more of a close up. So just to take you around the crane lab really quickly, you've got, what's significantly different about is the size of these motors. They are substantially bigger and ridiculously strong for what they can do uh, and, for what, for, and for the money. Um, so as I said, this was about 2000 Australian dollars. By the time I got a few extra bits and pieces, I'll tell you about in a second, it was more like two and a half by the time I got it. Um, so if I take you around, first thing that's worth noticing is this little extension piece here. That's actually not on the gimbal when you get it. That's in the box, but you have to add it on. And that's so that you can have these bigger camera packages. It just extends the camera out, giving you more clearance here at the back. So that's something you have to add on yourself. It does mean once that's on there, it doesn't unfortunately fit in the box anymore. You know, first world problems. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky one to put on. Certainly not something I'd be planning to take on and off repeatedly. I think it's sort of a put it on and leave it on kind of situation. Um, so one of the the other things that's been super handy with these is the ability to lock off each of the axes. That's kind of a common thing on gimbals now, but um, certainly something that's really helpful. You can lock each one of them off while you balance, the, balance them sequentially. Um, the other main thing I wanted to point out is around the side here. So this is what you get with the Pro Kit. This is their, what they call a Power Plus battery pack. Now, one thing that's not super clear in their marketing is that you can't fly any kind of heavy camera without one of these. So you've got to have one of these hanging off the side, which provides a ridiculous amount of juice, which drives the motors and it opens up these other motor power settings. So at the moment I've got these running on what they call ultra, which is the, the highest possible level. Uh, so you can see there, it's got a, a, a pretty significant Limo plug there uh, that runs off that power plus battery. Uh, so that's a nice professional connector, which is kind of unique in this, um, range of gimbal I guess like it, it is kind of a bit of a DSLR feeling market the way that they set up their connections and the the features of the gimbal it definitely feels like it's still catered to the DSLR market yet it's got the ability to fly way more higher end, high end cameras so it's sort of a weird situation but hey what the hell let's all have a crack and see what we can do with it um, so just to show you that battery I might just flick out flick back to the main camera for a sec so this is one of the Power Plus batteries. I got a second one because you can actually power your camera off that. Um, so if I flick back to the GoPro, let me just show you. So what it is effectively is just six of the batteries that you would normally get inside the gimbal. So this little section here, if you weren't running the Power Plus batteries, you'd be driving the gimbal simply off there's one, two, and there's another one underneath. There's three of those. So that's what would normally be running the gimbal. But now with these Power Plus um, battery packs, it just gives it a ton more juice. And if you have a look on this other side here, you'll see you get a little barrel connector. So 7.4 volt, which is handy. You get a USB, which could be, could be useful for powering some accessories. And then over this side, you get two D taps. If I flick that open, so you get a standard 4.8 volt, which you could use to drive most cameras. And then you get this ridiculous 21.6 volt, 64.8 watt max connection. So that's the that orange one is the one that you're gonna power the gimbal off. And that's what gives those motors the extra juice that they need to carry this kind of package, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, so the way that they mount, you get these little brackets here, which is kind of like a, effectively like a V-lock. Um, that goes onto the, the little rosette there, which is handy. That means it's not gonna rotate on you in the middle of a pretty frenetic move. And then basically the, the Power Plus just clicks on like that. And that's how it's gonna stay on the camera, stay on the gimbal. So yeah, that's, a, that's just a really important point that I guess when I was researching it, I didn't really pick up this fact that without those Power Plus battery packs, you can't do these crazy things that they claim. I mean, this is the packaging that it comes in. So that's a red camera with an Ongino EZ lens on it. Depending on which red model that is, you know, you're talking about 50 to $100,000 worth of camera gear, depending on what, what bits and pieces you've got with it. That's a pretty hectic amount of gear to fly on something that costs $1,500 in its base package, something like about 2000 Australian. So what's that like 1300 US? Uh, I don't know what kind of dickhead would plan to put that much camera value on it. I'm certainly one of them because I, I actually have one of those Ongino lenses and I'm planning to pop it on the gimbal for this car mount work that we're going to do for this music video. So this is the Ongino EZ, this is the 2 I believe, um, set up for full frame. 
Now, interestingly, this weighs about 2.15 kilos. This Atlas Orion 40 mil I've got in here weighs 2.35 kilos. So this is actually heavier than the Ingenieur. So this is kind of proof that these kind of rigs are possible on this little crane. Um, I've also got a whole lot of other crap if I cross back to the GoPro. Give you a quick look at what I'm running here on the red. So we've got the Orion 40 mil. Um, I, as standard on my Monstro, I run this RT Motion Sidekick, which gives me three axes of lens control and two uh, external control ports. And I'm using that to run a finger wheel here for when I run around so I can get a bit of nice focus. Um, I also run as standard a Teradek DSMC2 Bolt 500 wireless module. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about why I've still got that on even though the crane does wireless video. Um, and I've got the uh, Red Vault, oh, sorry, the V-Lock expander module here from Red. So, you know, it's, it's certainly not a stripped down Monstro and I've got this fairly hefty seven inch ultra bright red monitor. So that's the, the one with the solid mounting points at the back, which isn't a light monitor at all. I think that might be 75, 750 grams or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's not a, it's not a small rig. It's not, I haven't really taken much off it to, to make this work. So the fact that this can hold it is pretty interesting. Um, couple of quick other things before we actually pick it up and have a go because I'm sure most of most of you that's what you're here to see. Um, one of the other things you get with the Pro module, the Pro package, is some um, lens motors. So you get a focus and a zoom motor and you get these little brackets that give you the ability to kind of get it up and around the lens for some of your bigger rigs. I've played with this a little bit and played with it previously on the Crane 3. Look, there's a whole lot of things that we have to be realistic about with this which is you get what you pay for. Um, I I haven't been able to get these working with the Atlas Orion yet. Part of that is because of some issues I can tell you about with the wireless communication, but I'm not sure that I would really rely on something like this for a really critical job. So that's why I've still got the RT Motion uh, lens control there. You can see I've got a single motor there for my focus because I know it works. It's got heaps of range. Um, it works here. I've got the MK31 controller here, which I've got mounted on the side of the wooden camera. Um, director's monitor cage which i just got that's the new v3 one which i'm pretty pretty keen on uh so yeah the fact that I've, i'm still running my own focus my own wireless video even though june does provide that stuff in the package look it is very much a get what you pay for situation so why don't i flick on the red and i'll show you what i mean in that regard so if i just grab the gopro again i'll flick around the back and i'll just show you a couple of the sort of key pieces so under here you've got June's transmitter. So this does both uh, control of DSLR cameras and even some more high-end cameras, and it also gives you a vision feed. So I've got, unfortunately, the cable they provided wasn't anywhere near long enough for a red like this. So I'm using a way too long, ugly HDMI lead here, running back to the expander module. So that's to give me a feed into the, the June system. Um, as I said, I've also got my own Teradek system, which we'll have a look at later, so you can kind of compare the quality of the two. Uh, and so what I also got um, additionally to that Pro package was I got a receiver here to match the transmitter. Um, so that can work as a standalone HDMI transmitter if you want. You can chuck you know, the, the transmitter on a DSLR and have a receiver here and you can get some wireless video. It's also designed to pass, it's supposed to pass through the camera control and I got one of these, which is their motion sensor remote. So in theory, what should happen is this receiver should be able to uh, receive commands from the transmitter on the, uh, the June, and this remote should then be able to control using this joystick here. You'd be able to pan and tilt the camera, and you can turn on if you use this switch here. You're supposed to be able to turn that on, and then it's got like a gyroscope or an accelerometer in it, so when you turn that around, you're affecting the gimbal position in real time. Unfortunately, as much as I've been able to test, I cannot get this thing to work. So that's something I'm actually talking with their support about. They're saying red cameras aren't supported. I don't entirely believe them. Uh, I think there should still be a way to get it work. So I'm just kind of stumbling my way through it, but we'll see where that gets to. But I have figured out a weird little workaround, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. So I'm just going to turn that transmitter on there. I'm going to turn this one on here. So just a long press and that'll switch on. And the other thing to note with their wireless video system, interestingly, even though the red's set up 
as I normally would for 1080p 25. Stop flashing GoPro. Uh, by the time it goes through Zoom, June, or whatever you say, June's HDMI transmission, it's coming out as 1080p 30, which is a little troubling. So that means that they're adding frames or converting the video signal perhaps unnecessarily, which could introduce some kind of lag or, you know, artifacts that you wouldn't necessarily want. Um, it's been stable for the most part in terms of a wireless connection. I haven't had a chance to really test the range, but uh, sometimes when you switch it on, it's, a, it's almost unusable and there's a lot of dropouts. So it is a bit of a, you know, a uh, bit of a hinky system, I think. That's why I'm still running my Teradex system to get a stable wireless connection. Um, so, yeah, you can see that that's up now. Um, if I switch across to, so that is the June wireless system. Probably doesn't help if I'm just pointing it directly at a light. Let's point it back at the C500. So you can kind of, just by using this focusing, you can kind of see it's a little jumpy. Let's switch across to the Teradek. So that's the Teradek wireless. So if I switch between them, so that's the zoom. Obviously this will be, make a little bit more sense when I'm actually moving around with the gimbal, but just to give you some idea initially, now we're back to Teradek. So you can see there's a quality difference. It's not surprising. It is really a you get what you pay for situation. So, you know, I think that's, that's okay. So what we might do is flick the gimbal on and I can give you an idea of how that how that works. So first thing we're gonna do is unlock the different axes. Tilt and then roll and then pan. And then with bated breath, we hold down the button on the side, give it a second and you'll see that activate. So that's working now. So if I use a little joystick, I'll show you on the GoPro. So there's a little joystick underneath here. It's also got a focus wheel around the side here. That would only work if you were using Zoom's focus system, which I'm not at the moment. So you can see there, that's giving us some control. So far, so good. I have found a few times if I, if I tilt all the way down, it freaks out. I mean, this is a pretty heavy payload, but it's doing surprisingly well. So I'll just cut back to the main camera and I'll just give you an idea of this little workaround I found, because if I'm gonna do this car mount stuff uh, in this music video next week, obviously being able to control the gimbal remotely is kind of a deal breaker that really needs to happen. So I've got to figure something out there. Um, so what I did find, which look, where I'm hoping this isn't the only option I've got, if I just jump to the GoPro again. So let's just go. ZY Play is the name of their system. So if I connect to that, Now it's supposed to receive a live vision stream or it certainly did back in the Crane 3 days, the Crane 3 lab days. I should have been seeing a wireless picture here. I'm not, that's something I'm still trying to figure out. But so one little interesting thing here, if I go across here and hit this sync motion button. Now the first thing I wanna do, I learned this one the hard way. I'm gonna dial the speeds way down. And I'm also going to put in some roll, not that you'd normally use roll, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to race across to smoothness. Let's max them all out. And the button you want to push to activate it is here. So before I do that, I'm just going to go back to the main camera and get ready, everyone. Gird your loins because some pretty sexy stuff is about to happen. So I'm going to push that button and then... The phone is controlling the gimbal. Wow. Ladies, am I right? So look, worst case, I'm gonna sit in the boot of the car that the talent's driving with my little phone and I'm gonna control the gimbal this way. It wouldn't be the first time I'd operated a camera from the boot of a car. I'm hoping that doesn't have to be the case, but you know, it's good to have a backup. So yeah, this, so far, this is my only way of remotely controlling the gimbal. 
Obviously, there's a whole lot of people who'll never have to care about this. You're looking to use a gimbal to run around with physically and control it yourself. You'll be using the follow mode or the POV mode or the pan follow mode. But for my purposes, the main thing that I want to do is control it remotely. So that's something I'm pretty keen to figure out. All right, so I'm going to disable that. Cool. And I'll just pick this up. So oh, the other thing I forgot to point out was the handles on the bottom here don't come standard with it. These are small rig handles, which I got that are sold specifically for the Crane 3S. They also sell some handy little brackets, which gives you some slightly more secure mounting options underneath. So have a look at that small rig stuff if you need to sort of pimp your Crane 3S. Um, so, what, so everything's on at the moment. If I pick this guy up, you can see it in action and then I'll switch to the actual camera so you can see what the smoothness of the footage is like. So I'm just gonna check, oh, I'm back into L mode. So I'm just gonna change my mode here. So back to pan follow mode. So that means if I turn in theory, it should follow me. So, so far so good. What I might do before we get going is ditch the HDMI cable because you guys have kind of seen that now. See, I can kind of get, I can't get much tilt at the moment because of that HDMI. The roll, was the place where I found it started to kind of, so you can see there it's starting to crap out. And then same on the other side, kind of gets to about there and starts to freak out. So there are some limitations to where you can go, but certainly a lot of usable stuff in there. So I'm gonna ditch this HDMI cause it's pissing me off and it's not really that worth it. So what I'll do is switch across to the live output from the Teradek, give you a little look at the footage. So look, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a huge gimbal user. I don't love gimbal footage. Um, I kind of feel like it's a great equalizer, but there's definitely uses for it. Um, so there may be some shithouse operating that you're noticing here, but any experienced gimbal op operators would hopefully be seeing that this thing's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, I can go to crane up here past my substantial collections of cabling and accessories. If I had my proper streaming system going, this would have been a really sexy split screen. So you could have seen me moving while you saw the shot as well. But boo hoo, first world problems. So yeah. That's a little idea of the motion from it. So I think one of the next things I'm gonna to try to do is actually balance that on Geno. I'm not gonna do it today because no one wants to see me messing around with uh, a new lens rig, but I would be tr would, will be planning to put that Ongino lens on there so that we've got that ready for the car rig and potentially have focus iris zoom motors all mounted on it so that it's got complete control. So just a quick shout out to Jerry. Don't call me King Greats, you give me a big head. Uh, and yeah, this thing is, it's, it's heavy. It's kind of heavy. Look, why don't I, so that you can get an idea. Oh, I know you're gonna see my disgusting Studio for yeah, what the hell? All right, look, I'm gonna give you an idea of how heavy it is. Switch across to the live camera. <laughs> Let's go put it on the scale. I wonder if you'll be able to see. Let's have a look. <laughs> so if I turn that down. and then bring the camera up. Oh, can we get sharps? No, we probably can't. All right, it's 12.3 kilos total. <clears throat> so look, I'm, I'm okay with it for the kind of shots that I would normally do with a gimbal. I could, I could be, I could see myself using that for, you know, short takes, shortish takes. I do a lot of steady cam, so I guess I'm kind of used to some weight with a camera package. 
Look, there might be people that find this to be completely unusable. One thing I am keen to do is get a one of the small HD ring systems that goes the whole way around. Because um, I think one thing that would really help would be ditching this monitor off the camera, which is what most quality gimbal operators, I'm not pretending to be one, would do. Uh, they'd take the monitor off and have that on the top of the, the gimbal ring. And obviously the ring gives you the ability to grab some, you know, easy rigs and attach it to that. Do I feel a little bit out of breath? Are you noticing that? I guess that tells you how heavy it is. Um, hey Mark, Perrick, what's up man? And all wheel TV, thanks for watching as well. Um, and the shelf, yeah, look, the shelf's a work in progress. Oh, I forgot to turn on my gratuitous flare light. Look, I'll turn that on again. This stuff's just necessary, you know, we've got a flare there. And then if we turn around, there we go. Just get that nice little pinstripe flare off the Orion's beautiful. Something's moving here. Oh, I know what's happened. I'm gonna put this down real quick. So I think my, my handles have just come loose from the bottom of the gimbal a little bit. There's a little bit of play in there. Oh boy, yeah, nice. Okay, cool. So maybe we won't carry that one around much anymore until I fix that, because you can see there, that's a kind of undesirable amount of play, but hopefully you guys kind of got a rough idea of what this thing's capable of. Um, hey Rich, uh, yeah, Eva One Kit would absolutely smash this thing. I mean, this this camera package here that I've got on, I, I, I did weigh this on its own, and that was 7.45 kilos, I think. I mean, a decent Eva One package, even with a lens, you know, would be substantially less than that. Yeah, 7.45 was the camera package. So yeah, that's a, that's a chunky amount. I can't remember what that is in pounds, but um, that's a chunky amount of uh, camera to be throwing on a $2,000 gimbal, but it does pretty well. Oh, Sean from ARB. Hey man, all wheel TV, there you go. You're a legend. Good to see you, bro. We'll hear from you. Um, and I'll just see if there's some fa any Facebook stuff going on. So yeah, I think I uh, really appreciate the offer of borrowing your Sony Action Cam, Perrick. Um, yeah, that should, that should come in really handy, bro. Thanks for that. Uh, um, I'm going to be talking to June about hopefully fixing this thing with the motion sensor so I can actually control this bloody thing when I've got it mounted on a car doing 60 k's an hour. Um, but look, the fact that a camera this size can fly on this price of a gimbal I'm really surprised. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. And like I said, I've got the ability potentially to um, have the second Power Plus battery sitting on the other side here, and I could actually get a DTAP to Limo cable to run the RED. Um, definitely, I'd, I've, I've already got a DTAP to Komodo cable. Shout out to the guys at Ignite Digi down in Tassie who I bought that from. Those guys are legends too. Um, so I'd be able to run the Komodo off this battery, which would mean the Komodo would be even lighter. Although, to be honest, that thing's under a kilo. So even with some, a couple of those Canon 955 batteries on the back, it's still going to be a pretty attractive little package. So I think this thing's really going to come into its own with the Komodo. Like I said, that arrives tomorrow and we're going to get into it, get right into it. Uh, so the Komodo mixed with say the Ongino EZ lens, you know, I've got the 15 to 40 here and then the other ones are 30 to 90. The numbers are, that's the numbers for Super 35. The numbers are a bit different for full frame. Um, that's gonna be a pretty wild capability. I'm pretty excited about that. Mind you, I'm kind of sad. I don't really have a life. So, you know, not everyone's gonna be that excited about it. Um, look, uh, I. I guess given that I'm not really able to see the questions like I normally would, I should probably just say goodbye, but promise that there will be more nerdery to come. And definitely if you want to know about any particular gear that you know I've got that I've mentioned previously, um, or any techniques in particular, please hit me up um, on social media. Um, I'm, I'm on Instagram at uh, greatc80, uh, and Facebook and YouTube is the business name, Greats Media. So please hit me up. Um, the next episode was probably gonna be uh, breaking down the Komodo, and I might be bringing in a special guest for that, which will be fun. Um, and then the one after that I was thinking of do, we might be able to do a few episodes f live from this music video shoot. I'm kind of hoping to pull that off. Mind you, music video shoots, 
you know, they're never big budgets and they're, never, they're always high stress. So taking time to do a live stream might be a little ambitious, but I'll give it a crack. Other than that, I've got a really cool episode planned on how all of my music video sync has worked on the different clips that I've made. So for me, the number one way of making a music video look high end is to shoot off speed. That means you're filming the band or the talent at a frame rate that's faster or slower than the project frame rate that you're gonna deliver in. So say you're gonna deliver in 25 frames, you might get the artist to perform the song at 35 frames. That means you need to create a version of the song that's faster so that they're performing to a faster speed of song, you're filming faster, when you put it back into the computer at 25, they look all dreamy in slow motion, but their lips are perfectly in sync and it all works. But the only way to do that reliably is using an iPad slate. So that's what I've always used, um, where you create a visual time code uh, that's got the music laid into it. And I've been able to do some pretty insane stuff with that. So I'm keen to be able to show people that capability because I think it's gonna open up a lot of um, options for, uh, it, it, it just gives you creativity because you're not worried about, oh, I'm not gonna do this because I know it's gonna be a headache in post. If you know that the post is dead easy and honestly, once you know this technique, it's a couple of clicks and it just drops straight into the timeline exactly where you need it to. And it's pretty much right every time. So yeah, I'm keen to take people through that. Um, that's gonna involve a, involve a little bit of uh, motion control geekery as well. So I guess, Unless there's any other questions, um, thanks heaps for watching. This is early days, you know, I'm really keen to do more of this stuff. Um, obviously it'll get better and hopefully my system will be back up and running next time so things will be a little more visually interesting. But I uh, really appreciate people who've taken the time to watch and thanks to everyone on Instagram. How you doing? And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.